what you're ready for this man hey guys welcome to another episode of big vapors tutorial so in this episode it's going to be a tutorial slash review slash uh aftermath okay so let me explain what i mean by that not that long ago, I did a review on a new device uh, that I got from Nick Fit Nation called the Power Baby. This is the 5000 Ma Power Bank uh, converted or modded uh, into uh, an e-cig, uh, essentially, by adding a 510 uh, connector uh, to this power bank, uh, USB out, and a mini in for charging. Um, it makes it a really cool device for vaping and it comes with um, that 510 uh, ego uh, voltage regulator. I'm not going to go through all the specs and everything again of the Power Baby. Check out the review if you haven't seen it. I'll put a link in the description. Now in that review I talked about how much I loved this device and I'll be honest I still do like this device. I'm not saying that this is a bad device. What I'm saying is though recently I have had some issues with this device. Now I believe I have a version 1 of the Power Baby. I know there's a version 2, though from other reviews I've seen online, version 2, I think really the only main difference is that they added uh, plugs for the ports here so that e-juice didn't get inside and cause any problems. Those are not the problems I'm having. I've had this for, well, pretty much pre-launch. Uh, I got it just before uh, it came out, so about a month maybe, maybe just over a month. I can't remember the exact date now. So I've had had it for a while, been vaping it for a while, and then uh, last week, something very strange happened to my Power Baby. As you can see, the indicator lights on the Power Baby are on. I'm not pressing any buttons, it's not plugged in, and these indicator lights simply haven't turned off in almost a week. These have been fully lit. Now, Initially, I figured, okay, I'll reset it or something like that. There is no hard reset that I'm aware of. There's just the standard, you know, plug it in, unplug it, and it's supposed to reset it. That didn't work. Um, so I gave it a good cleaning. I figured maybe something happened to my button, and it's been pressed in, and it's just making a connection so that the light stays on. So I used isopropanol. Uh, I carefully cleaned uh, the button, and it... Uh, still, as you can see, hasn't made a difference. Now, it's not triggering, meaning it's not firing, so it's actually not generating uh, at least enough power to cause any damage. The device itself is actually not warm. It's not overheating, though I've been very careful with it not to leave it lying around all my other vape stuff. I actually keep it in a bucket now in my basement shower, and I pull it out when I want to vape. But you got to be careful. You never know. I'm not saying it's going to explode. I highly, highly, highly doubt that there's any kind of issue like that. What I also find interesting is that these are the battery indicator lights and um, they've been on a solid four pretty much for a week too. So I actually have no clue how much juice is actually left inside the Power Baby. The other weird thing is when I plug it in, so it's already connected to my USB port, when I plug it in to charge it, I don't know if you can see that, but uh, I'm not getting any Sorry, it's really hard there. I'm not getting any indicator that it's charging. What it's supposed to do is the lights are supposed to go do 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 across the thing as if it's charging. So honestly, I have no clue if it's even charging at all. What I can tell you though, however, is that it still vapes. So just to show you, and it actually still vapes well. So that's at five volts on a KR308 and it's uh, it's still vaping fine and when I put my voltage regulator on here the light indicator still comes on and I can still change the voltages so there's nothing wrong with the connector there's nothing wrong with the actual button triggering the device there's nothing wrong with the voltage connector there's nothing wrong with with any of my gear um, the lights simply won't go off and I have no clue if it's charging. The other thing I have noticed and I'm, I'm, I, 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 I'm thinking that it's, it's, it's a hardware malfunction in the sense that I think something is broken inside. The button seems to be a little more indented than normal and I, I don't get that clicking sound. It feels like it's pressed in a bit. You'll notice that when I press on it though, see it's firing. So it still fires, 
but whatever maybe keeps it out a bit more and not triggering that doesn't seem to be working. So I racked my brain about this. I had a friend of mine who um, is an electrician and who also plays around um, with mods and stuff, take a look at it, and uh, the only thing we could think of in the end is that. We had a really hard time figuring out how this thing came apart, and we wanted to be very, very careful. So I'm about to show you a couple tricks, and I'm going to give you a direct, direct straight-up warning do not absolutely, under any conditions, try this at home yourself if you don't know what you're doing. If you don't have experience with uh, dismantling and playing with electronics, if you don't have experience um, with uh, dismantling and building and taking apart mods, um, don't do this. One, this will absolutely um, void your warranty. So I voided my warranty, that's fine, I don't care, I wanted to experiment, but your warranty will be voided, which means your $69 or whatever it is that uh, they're going for now, gone. You're not going to get a new device, it's not going to be replaced, you're not going to get your money back, no more warranty. And two, you could seriously cause damage to the device or yourself. Okay, so don't do this, that's my warning, be advised, do not try this at home. So, let's take a look at this. There's actually a little tiny, i got this really cool light that I'm going to use here. There's a little tiny, I don't know if you can see that, there's like a screw right there at the bottom. So the first thing I figured is, okay, unscrew it. I unscrewed that, <laughs> nada, nothing happened. I mean, really, I was like, okay, why is there a screw there? I noticed that the plate here was a little loose, but it was like impossible for me to get out. I tried using some smaller tools um, to gently try and pop that cap out, but it was increasingly becoming difficult and I didn't want to take the risk. So I screwed it back in. Plus, I figured there's probably nothing down here anyways. I thought maybe if that unscrews, the whole thing comes out or something like that. The case itself would just slide off. That's not the case. And uh, like I said, all the ports are at the top, which means that's probably just battery access, which is not going to help me in this situation. So then I started taking a look at the top. I'm like, this is all flush. There's no screws. There's no holes. I mean, this is obviously a form-fitted uh, device. Uh, meaning that it's molded around the battery and the electronics. So they assemble everything, and then this gets molded around it to form fit it. Um, there is definitely a seam down the side that you can see, but the end and bottom, the top and end caps, I guess you can call them top and end caps, uh, the, the, the end cap here is totally flush. So it definitely doesn't come off, which is why there's a screw and a cap here for whatever reason. However, the top, not the case. If you have a power baby, take a look at your power baby, and you'll notice that you can see that there's actually a groove in here. And at certain angles, you can actually see a bit of white in here. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. There's a bit of white um, because these are painted black. Initially, they are white as far as, as far as I know. So I started looking at and thinking about that, and I'm like, I bet you this pops off. And it does, and I'm going to show you how to pop this off. I have not figured out the perfect way to pop this off yet with any kind of specific tools because you're going to risk scratching or causing other damage to the vise. Um, I wouldn't squeeze it too hard either because there is electronics in there. But if you hold it, and this is how I do it, thumb on top, index finger on the bottom, okay? If you hold it and squeeze a bit, it will actually start to come a bit loose. And then you can get your fingers under that groove. And once you get your fingers under that groove, see what I just did there? I'll show you. It pops. See, it's starting to pop off. And I'm just going to pull it gently. Okay. Takes a bit of playing with. You got to gently squeeze and pull because you don't want to cause any damage to it. It's not easy. This is why I say you got to be careful. And the top piece uh, comes right off. And then you can see that there are actually two little grooves here. Let's get my little light again. Oh, that's horrible. Well, yeah, there are two little grooves there, right? That uh, inside, there are two things that pop into it. So it just pops right off and uh, you can get a perfect uh, look inside of your device. And yes, it's very bright right now. Nothing I can do about that because the lights will not go on. As you can see, the lights are constantly on. The one thing you can learn from doing this, and this is what I learned, uh, is you can definitely see um, that it's form fitted. So there's absolutely no second guessing that. And what's really cool is that the, if you look in here, and I don't know if I'm going to get this properly on the light. Yeah, this is just a bad setup, and I apologize for that. But the battery is down there, 
and it's a uh, huge battery. You can see all the way down uh, to the battery. You can see the, the circuit board, uh, the USB, the 510 connector, uh, mini. It's all there. You can even see the switch, which is directly below the USB port, which is here. Right below it is the switch. Problem is, it's buried behind the USB and the circuit board. It's right down inside. So basically, you'd have to, it's kind of like a curve. It curves under, and it's right under there, which makes it essentially impossible to do anything with. And this is what I've been racking my brain around for the last little while because when I point the light in there and I look and I can see right now, when I point my light in there, I can see that the switch is definitely a little loose because I, when I press it, I can see it being pressed inside and I can tell that it's the switch that has somehow managed to come loose in here and it's pressed inside, which is why the lights are staying on. And again, I don't know if it's even charging when I plug it in because I don't get any indicators. Um, so what I've been doing is overcharging, which again, don't necessarily recommend, but plugging it in at night and then unplugging it uh, in the morning. Doesn't overheat, doesn't seem to be causing any damage, but the benefit there is that it's still vaping, as you saw, and uh, I'll show you again. And yeah, I wouldn't really recommend doing this, by the way. Don't vape it with the top cap off, but just showing you that it is definitely vaping. Now, here's the other thing. I'm going to leave this on for a second because I want to show you something. See this? Look how wobbly that is. That thing is ridiculous. The 510 connector is essentially completely loose. Um... And that's not actually normal, even with the top cap off, that shouldn't be loose. And this is one of the things I've been hearing a lot about online. People have been talking about the real issue they've been having with their power babies, that they're finding that the 510 connector comes loose. And I saw a discussion thread about this on the Nick Fit Nation uh, Facebook page. And that's because this is form-fitted. And because it's form-fitted, we're going to take a look at this. It's essentially like doing half at a time. So you... You create half and then you overlay the next half of the device. So if you look at this, you'll see, and I can, if I get this at the right angle, you'll see that there is only glue, okay, on this one side of, let's see if I can get this. Ugh. There is only glue on one side of the 510 connector. Yeah, this light isn't working, but trust me when I say this, there is only glue, there we go, that's way better. So screw this stupid light. So you see that there's glue only on one side. Now I didn't remove any glue, no glue fell out, that's the way it's made. There's glue on one side of that 510 connector, which in turn makes it extremely loose. So one way to fix it is to use epoxy and you can glue the other side of your 510 connector in here so that it's glued to both sides of the device. Because you can see the seam here now. Unfortunately, this you know there's two seams. There's one on both sides. This seam is actually also a bit loose, and if I pull a bit, it actually wants to come apart. And I'm not going to do that because then I totally probably destroy this device. But it's something I'm considering doing maybe over here to loosen the button and uh, then regluing it afterwards. You can see if I pull a bit, see that seam is loose on both sides. Okay, so it's not really that advanced uh, of a device. It's essentially a giant 5,000 mAh battery, and they've used the circuit board to connect to it to pull power from that battery, and then that circuit board powers the three other devices, or four maybe you could say. So your LED lights, your USB port, your mini USB, and the 510 connector. So it's all drawing power from the battery via the circuit board. And then, of course, the circuit board being the brain, it knows what each one of these devices are supposed to do. And then, of course, the triggering of the button to change the lights as well as fire the 510 connection. I There's no power coming from that 510 connection until you press this button. Okay? So some of the things that you can take into consideration, if you really know what you're doing, um, with stuff like this, then go for it. Take it apart, pull it apart. You can look at it, um, remod it, do whatever you want to it. Um, for those of you with a bit of technical know-how, you want to pop the cap and just glue it or have somebody you know do that for you, that will fix your 510 connection. In terms of the battery, 
or in terms of the button and fixing that problem. If you've had that problem, please let me know. I want to know if, if, if other people are having that problem. And if so, you know, just leave it in the comments of this uh, video or on the blog post where I post this video. Um, if you have any suggestions or ideas on what uh, you know can be done to fix it, that'd be cool too. And if you've dismantled yours and you have some advice and you've made some changes or fixes, it'd be great to hear what you've done as well. So again, this is just a very simple, basic tutorial. I'm not going into anything specific here. I'm not going to show you how to do any of the stuff like actually go in there and fiddle with the circuit board or play with the ports or glue it. You can do all that stuff yourself. I just wanted to show you that it's possible and it can be done. And yes, they do uh, come apart if you're willing to void your warranty and play around with it. So that being said, I still... Oh, let's just quickly show you how to put it back on. Very simple. Just make sure you have the grooves on the right side which is really easy to know because it lines up with the ports and then you just push it back on and it will snap into place or should snap back into place. Oh yes, that's right. I remember now. Putting it back on can be a bit tricky because it's so loose, the ports unalign with each other. So now I've got to redo this. Ah, of course this happens to me in the middle of a tutorial. Um, just want to quickly do this because I know exactly what the problem is. Yeah, it's not working, of course. Well, now don't I look like the fool who can't do a tutorial and take apart his device and put it back together properly. <clears throat> and I've somehow managed to get it stuck. So you want to make sure that you squeeze it a bit and that everything's aligned the right way before you put it back on because that's what happened to me because if you don't align it, there we go, it doesn't click into place properly. Boom, done, back in place, everything's working, button still fires, there's the red light, and then I'm gonna put my Cardo back on here just to show you that it's still uh, vaping. Mm -hmm. Still a great five volt vape. So, thoughts for me, I just think it's poorly designed, which is fine. This is a pretty new device. Uh, I guess you could call it a beta. Um, you know, it's only you know, version one, version two with plugs, whatever. Um, hopefully, you know, I know that uh, Vapor is in direct contact with the uh, manufacturers of this and anyone else who's carrying them as well, because I've started to see these crop up in a few other places now under the same name, Power Baby, and under. Uh, different names as well. Hopefully they'll start making some changes to it because it's a pretty cool device. I love the fact that it's a char it's a power bank that it can charge and, and it feels good in the hand. It's comfortable. It's it's nice looking. Um, there's a lot of things I like about it and it does vape well as a five volt vape and it's okay when you want to put the voltage regulator on there too. So it's not a bad device but it definitely has some design flaws. Design flaws in the form fitting, design flaws in the mechanical uh, button design flaws with the 510 connection, things that can, I think, be easily fixed. And I think this is a device that we're going to see more of, and uh, hopefully people will continue to, um, you know, advance this and do something with this. Now, I know some people have compared it to a cheaper version uh, of, a, of, like, the Gripper, for example, uh, other uh, or Gripper-style uh, mods. It is different because the Gripper does have a... Uh, digital display for voltage so it's a true VV it doesn't need a voltage regulator it's not a modded device into an e-cig it's built for that uh, whereas this isn't um, though I've heard people with the same problem with the gripper I've heard that the 510 connection is loose so again that comes down to form fitted devices because the gripper like other kinds of devices that look and feel like this they are form fitted and because they're form fitted there are definitely some de design flaws and if it's because of mass production and they don't want to, you know, the machine's doing it all, so there's no one there to, like, glue the other side afterwards, that's a flaw. Spend the extra time before that top cap goes on, add that extra bit of glue that fixes that 510 connection so easily. So I'm going to keep playing with this. I'm looking forward to your, oh, my God, 20 minutes. I'm so sorry, guys. But keep playing with this, and if I figure out a way to do more of the button and fix it and other stuff that you can do with it, I will let you know. So thank you for watching. I took up 20 minutes of your time. Hopefully it's been beneficial and you've learned something from this. Uh, keep on vaping. See you all on the flip side. I'm going to leave you with a toot of my um, malfunctioning <laughs> PB. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Follow me at Digibob on Twitter. Check out the blog, bigvapers.wordpress.com. All right, y'all ready for this, man?
Wa-da-da-da